After the Adventist Church Annual Council voted and approved a new position on abortion in October 2019, the official channel for the Adventist Church in Latin America posted a video here of several church leaders discussing this new position. Now, in Latin America, there are two major languages, Spanish and Portuguese. The Spanish video is right here, and the Portuguese is here. A very good friend of mine translated and wrote out the entire transcript for the video in Spanish and it teaches us several important lessons. Number one, the Adventist Church in Central and South America does not have the history and has not had to deal with the abortion issue in the same manner and to the same degree as the church in North America. Abortion remains outlawed in many countries and due no doubt to the influence of the Catholic Church, abortion is overall considered a serious moral evil as it should be. When speaking to Adventists from these countries, generally Generally speaking, you're not going to have all this weird conversation about personhood or women's rights or all this woo-woo nonsense. It's, it's just wrong. Abortion is wrong. End of story. However, in recent years, the movement to legalize abortion is growing. And as it does, the church's false witness will continue to gain attention. The most prolific writer on the issue of abortion inside our Adventist church, as many of you already know, is Nick Samoluk, who is from Argentina. And as a native Spanish speaker, I asked him for feedback on this video. The participants seemed to agree that Adventists are against abortion and that the document encourages us not to assume a critical attitude towards those who have had their own understanding of abortion. They made a reference to the protocols that are being studied by a church special committee. The last statement was an encouragement to us to treat people the way Jesus treated them. There was no question or any reference to section 6 of the document, nor any comment about Doug Batchelor's opposition to it. We can't expect church employees to offer any criticism of a church document. The policy seems to be hear no evil and see no evil. So for those of you who are already aware of this issue, these leaders here unfortunately offer nothing new, which is unfortunate because Adventists in Latin America are much more unified in their opposition to killing children than here in the United States. However, in this video, I want to focus on this man right here. His name is Adolfo Semo Suarez. He is the president for the Adventist Theological Seminary of Latin America. The woman here is just an interviewer for Spanish, and the man on the far right is the interviewer for Portuguese, and the man on the left right here is the health ministry's director for the entire South American division. The problem is that whenever the president of the seminary is asked to speak about the church's position on abortion, he tries multiple times to hem and haw to evade or downplay the issue and makes several very troubling statements. At about seven minutes in the video, he repeats the idea that when a woman says, my body, my choice, we Adventists are supposed to respect that. But at the same time, he also claims that the Bible does not, does not support this idea. The problem is that if the Bible does not support this idea of freedom of choice for abortion, then why should we respect a woman's choice to kill her child? typical of Adventist leaders, he contradicts himself. He sounds very confused or even deliberately misleading his audience by attempting to claim that we can respect what women want if they have an abortion while simultaneously holding the biblical position that freedom to choose does not allow you. It does not include freedom to kill innocent human beings. At about 19 minutes, the woman asks him, and who are we to take life? There is actually one commandment that is very clear about preserving life. And and he responds, let me say something about what you just said. Who are we? Point four says God is the owner of life. Human beings are his stewards. This is one of the three or four key points of this document. It says that we are his stewards. We deal or as in manage life. We were not called to end or finish life. This is something that belongs to God. We are the stewards of life and as the medical profession in order to keep it. To finish it is not the responsibility nor in the realm of the steward. It belongs only to God. However, what's so amazing is that Throughout this whole discussion, neither the interviewers nor the health ministry's director seem even remotely aware of section 6 of the document, which has the loophole for deliberately killing children. Somehow, section 6 dominated the entire discussion at annual council, yet strangely, remarkably, these people seem to be entirely ignorant of that. To those of you watching this video, here's a great question to think about. 
Why is it that the president of the seminary is so quick, he's so quick to cite section four or any section of the document that supports his ideas, yet notice this, he remains completely silent about section six. You notice that? He just somehow is totally ignorant of the entire discussion at annual council. That's, that's just amazing. You know, to me, this just seems totally fake and phony. At about 25 minutes in the video, she asks him, in countries where abortion is legal, do SDA institutions practice it? And he answers, well, well, uh, that enters into the realm of laws and the document does not enter into the details. And he starts mumbling and then says, I'm not a lawyer. He is not. And we are not lawyers. It is better for us not to enter into this subject. The reason that I am making this video is because this is the president. This is the president of the Adventist Seminary for all of Latin America. And when asked about the legalization for the killing of children, his response is to say, yo no soy abogado ni él también, ni nosotros. Yo no soy abogado, ni él también, ni nosotros. Eh, mejor no entrar en esos temas. I'm not a lawyer. He's not a lawyer. We're not lawyers. So let's not discuss that. Apparently, we have come to the point in Seventh-day Adventist history where we need lawyers. Yes. We need lawyers to tell us about what we should say or do or think about the violation of the Sixth Commandment. And in order to better appreciate this, just substitute this with some other evil, say like slavery or rape, when the president of the church's seminary is asked to respond to the legalization of slavery or rape, he says, I'm not a lawyer, he's not a lawyer, and we're not lawyers, so let's just be quiet. This is, of course, ridiculous. For those of you watching this video, I don't know about you, but I'm not very comfortable with the idea of lawyers telling me how to be a faithful witness for Christ. No, thank you. And this is not the only problem throughout the entire interview. He repeatedly ignores the implications of section six several times. He tells them that we should not really say anything and just leave it up. Oh, just leave it to those church leaders there in the GC. They'll, they'll figure it out. And if you notice carefully at about 25 minutes, look at his body language. He's looking all over the place. He's searching, trying to find some way to get away from this issue. So, so based upon all of these responses, I believe he knows much more than he is admitting and he knows that if he even begins to say anything, this is going to cause a lot of problems. So he would rather just preserve the status quo and act like everything is okay. Oh, just move along, nothing to see here. This man did not become the president of the seminary by being stupid. He's very intelligent and he knows that he will upset North America and upset the GC if he says anything. So he just wants everyone to be quiet. This is very sad and very disappointing. This is the number one leader and president for the seminary seminary that is supposed to be training leaders for our church and he won't say even one word against the murder of an innocent little child. Absolutely pathetic. The interview was also repeated here in Portuguese. If you do speak Portuguese and want to volunteer by translating that video for us, we would greatly appreciate it. Please contact me at prolifeandrew at gmail.com. Please see down below for links to the videos and the transcript in Spanish.